Hi, and welcome to Medicine with Dr. Warren. I'm here with Dr. Keith Warren today, and we're going to be talking about how this channel can help you and why he started it. I started this channel recently and the reason why I did that was because over the years I've made patient information sheets for my patients that go over procedures that we're about to undertake or medical conditions that they have with my suggestions so that they have an idea of what they should be doing. What I wanted to do was to take these pages and turn them into videos. There's a lot of things that I just simply can't put down on a sheet of paper that I can do in a video. And this is one of the reasons why I want to allow not just my patients to see these, but also the general public. It's important when people are in my office to be relaxed, and obviously that's never going to be the case. Patients are always a little bit uptight. They may be frightened, scared, they're worried about what I might have to say in terms of giving them a diagnosis uh, that is not so good, such as cancer, for example. And so it's important that when you try to deliver information to them that they can actually listen in a relaxed environment. And so the patient information sheets on different conditions allow them to understand things in a situation at home. And of course, if you're able to do that on a video, they're able to replay the video many times as they like, which is really important to them. I've also adapted my sheets over about 30 years. I have many sheets on different topics, both things of a heart nature, such as stress testing, echocardiograms, heart monitoring, blood pressure monitors, as well as endoscopy that I carry out. I've got a number of sheets about different medical conditions, such as vascular disease, high blood pressure, constipation, diarrhea, symptoms, gas, bloating, chest pain, heartburn, these sorts of things that I give out on a regular basis. I've received many compliments on my sheets over the years, and I wanted to sort of take it to the next level. Hmm. That's interesting. Um, so what makes your channel unique, and why should we subscribe? That's a great question. And the big thing about my channel is that you've got a full-time practicing physician who's doing this, somebody that can actually weed through the medical literature and give sound medical advice. I think that's important. A lot of the stuff on the internet, things that patients bring into me, often they're not able to put it in context. And the reason why I say that is a lot of the internet sources are written by non-healthcare people. There may be allied healthcare professionals. Uh, there may be people that aren't even in the medical field trying to give sound advice. And I think it's important because experience means a lot. And I think trusted advice is important. We may not know everything in medicine about different problems, but we try to do our best and we try to sift through what works and what doesn't work. And I can certainly tell you that over the years, I've become a better and better physician, primarily because in medical school and in residency, you just can't possibly know what the most important things to do with any given patient are. Often you need that clinical experience. One of the things that I can tell my viewers is obviously I can provide a lot of good medical advice to them, but unfortunately I'm not their doctor and they can't rely solely on videos or the internet for their health care. And it's important that they discuss their symptoms with their health care professionals because that's the best way to treat things. It is though important that they get empowered by knowledge. And this is where I think I come in, where I can actually give people some knowledge so that they benefit more from their physician visits. What do your patients say in general about their experiences researching uh, common symptoms and problems online? Well, lots of people go online, obviously, to find out what's going on with their symptoms because they're concerned and the internet's always available 24 hours a day. And so they often look up what symptoms they have and there may be a list of possibilities they find. One of the problems we have with that, though, is often the source. And the source may be someone who's not even a healthcare provider or a non-physician. And so 
when they look at the information there, they may not be getting what I would consider to be some trusted advice. It's important when they're looking at things to try to be critical and try to ascertain what kind of knowledge they're getting and where it's coming from. Sometimes there'll be a number of possibilities for symptoms and patients typically key in, as you can imagine, on the worst diagnoses. So if there's some possibility that cancer is causing their chest pain, that's what they're gonna focus in on. Even though out of five or 600 people a year that I see with chest pain, probably only one will have cancer. And I think one of the things that you have to look at is putting that in perspective. And that's something where medical experience counts. That's something people get in medical school and through residency. But I can tell you that every physician, when they get out in practice, the first five years, their experience really goes up and up and up. And they start realizing what sorts of things uh, they're finding when they investigate people with different conditions. Because textbooks in medicine often don't tell you that. And while there may be a list of possibilities, it doesn't tell you what's most likely. And so that's something that you get with years of experience. One of the things that I tell people is that the history is the most important thing. So when people are telling me about what their symptoms are, for example, chest pain, it's important that we go over the history in great detail. And often the history actually tells you the diagnosis. You may want to do a test or two if necessary, but sometimes you can tell what's going on just by talking to the patient and asking them appropriate questions. And this is where it's important that patients know how to present the history. And that's something for another video, but I think it's really important as patients don't often know what to do before the doctor's visit. And that's something that is really important because you can sabotage your visit or you can make your visit much better simply by knowing a few things ahead of time and writing down key facts about the history so that the doctor gets the best story of what the problem is. Because obviously I can't be there when patients are having their symptoms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are a few of the common problems that people encounter when they're looking up symptoms online? Well, often they're hard to actually find. And there are obviously websites that are much more trusted than others. But again, you still have to put it into a perspective uh, in that a lot of the problems that are there, they may not be problems that are common and they may not relate to them. Uh, for example, with chest pain, there's different kinds of chest pains and different kinds of different potential diagnoses. And obviously you're not gonna get that on the internet uh, for sure. What are some of the qualifications that you have and what are the qualifications that you have that help your patients? I went to medical school in the late 80s and early 90s. I did my internship in internal medicine. I then did a, a long residency program in internal medicine and then I finished that off with a fellowship in general internal medicine. And I did that because I wanted to work out in the community. I wanted to see a wide range of problems and I wanted to help people who had different kinds of problems, but to, to be very good at different areas. And the main thing in communities are looking after people with heart disease, lung disease, and gastrointestinal disease. And by gastrointestinal disease, I mean problems with the stomach and the colon and uh, intra-abdominal conditions. And so I tailored my residency to that. So I spent a lot of time uh, in the rotations where we learned about heart disease. I did six months uh, studying echocardiography, which is our typical heart test that we do in many patients where we look at the heart with ultrasound. It's called an echo. And I became certified in that. I'm board certified and I have recertified in echo. I also spent six months doing gastrointestinal endoscopy. So I do colonoscopies and upper GI tract endoscopies. And that allows me to evaluate people with chest pain, for example, that actually have a esophageal cause for their symptoms. I also spent a lot of time doing ICU care because that's something that we need in the community that I'm in. And that uh, encompasses things like intubating people, uh, doing bronchoscopy to put a scope down through the endotracheal tube to uh, toilet the 
lungs, which means to suck out clots or uh, clogs of sputum that can get stuck there, which can cause the lung to collapse while we have people on mechanical ventilators. And in the intensive care unit, there are many other procedures that we do, uh, such as putting in central lines where we put intravenous catheters into the big uh, veins and arteries of the body to monitor things. So we can monitor arterial pressure, venous pressure, and also putting catheters uh, through the heart to measure cardiac pressures. I also do a lot of other procedures, uh, including bone marrow uh, aspirates, where we take out a sample of the bone marrow to see why people have low blood counts. Uh, lumbar punctures, where we take some spinal fluid out to rule out meningitis. Thank you for watching Medicine with Dr. Morin. I'm Dr. Keith Morin. Get healthy and stay healthy.